All right, well, uh, so we just had a little incident that was really interesting. Got me thinking about a couple of things health related. And it was that Natalie ended up getting a tick on top of her head. And she ran up. She said, ah, I feel something on top of my head. What do I do? And so we looked at it, and it was a big old fatty. And uh, we've got our we've got our buddy right there being preserved so we can send him off to get tested and all that other stuff. But anyway, so tick was on top of his, on top of her head. And uh, we started looking through all these different different. Um, diseases that you can get from ticks and diseases you can get from bacteria, which leads you to think about all the different things, times where you've ever been sick or you've ever had some kind of um, uh, infection or you've ever researched what kind of diseases you can get or the fact that headaches and nausea and all that other stuff accompany everything from aggressive cancer to a common cold. And if, if you think about the gamut of things that can give you an infection of some kind, one of the things you have to remember as you search through WebMD or anything like that is that your your body is constantly exposed to all this stuff. Even something like E. coli, as example, they talk about being getting E. coli infection from vegetables that have been washed improperly. But Ericea shirshimishmia coli is a natural bacteria that's actually found in your gut. And so what happens when you get an E. coli infection is that gut bacteria, the E. coli bacteria, gets overgrown compared to all the other bacteria in your intestines, and you end up being sick. So when you think about um, uh, you know, being afraid of different bacteria or being afraid of different viruses or whatever, you have to remember that your body is constantly, all day, being uh, involved and in contact with bacteria and viruses and such that can make you sick. All day. It's been doing that since the day you were born. In fact, they actually find that people who live in overly sterile environments oftentimes end up with lowered immune systems or end up with allergies because their body isn't ready to cope with whatever the disease is Oh, it just started raining. With whatever the disease is um, that your body needs to cope with. So the question becomes, how do you maintain long-term health? Well, you have to remember that your number one, your body's number one defense, your number, body's number one antibiotic, your number, your body's number one antiviral, your body's number one antifungal is your immune system. And so we need well, part of this whole well-fit life. A lot of times we talk about fitness on this when we do these well-fit Wednesdays, but let's talk about the wellness for a second. The wellness side is that you're living a lifestyle that not only helps you be fit, but the wellness side says, well, I'm going, I'm going to live well enough on a regular basis to where my immune system is going to be high enough. My ability for my body to repair from exercise or from everyday life is going to be high enough to the point where I can live long-term a healthy lifestyle. So what do you need to do? Sleep, number one. Force yourself to get the amount of sleep that you need, somewhere between seven to eight hours for most people. Proper nutrition will help your body, uh, help your cells heal and give it the fuel that it needs to keep your immune system running on all cylinders. Getting uh, adequate time outside, interacting with the environment. Our bodies were made to interact with the environment. So think about uh, vitamin D, calcium, um, uh, the way that our feet interact with the ground, all that stuff. Um, lowering stress. The people that I know who look the youngest long term are the people who have a tendency to be able to deal with stress very well. I was actually wondering uh, a couple days ago, I thought, can, you, can one make a conscious decision just to not be stressed? Can you just decide one day, you know what? Stress doesn't make any sense. We're all going to die one day. We're all going to have highs and lows in our lives. And most of the time, we're probably going to survive them. Uh, can I just decide not to be stressed out? Because is it a decision that I can make? And I, I would think, I would guess that the answer to that is yes, that you can actually decide not to be stressed out. And it's interesting that all chronic diseases uh, have some root in inflammation. So whether or not we're trying to get rid of this inflammation through a proper diet or we're trying to get rid of this inflammation through decreased stress levels or through increased rest, relaxation time or through increased enjoyment, whatever that may be, decreasing uh, chronic stress and chronic worrying uh, can majorly help us decrease chronic disease and ultimately boost our immune system so that when things like this happen, our body's ready and prepared to be able to get rid of and to fight whatever bacteria uh, is introduced to the body. So hope that helps. Um, if you guys are freaked out about ticks, mosquitoes, or any of the latest thing, remember that the, the uh, when you list, turn on the radio or turn on whatever it is, that their number one goal is to get more viewers. And um, most of the time, they're trying to scare you on purpose so that you listen to what they have to say. So take care of your body, and you should be able to be well and fit for the rest of your life. Till next week, we'll see you then on another Wealth of Wednesday.